All right, welcome back. As promised, we have the NanoPi M4 today, and you can get one of these at cat5.tv slash nanopie. This one was contributed to Category 5 TV by Marshman, and we thank you, Marshman, very much for sending this in or bringing it in to us, actually making the drive. He drove eight hours to bring this to us, folks. And here it is. Let's get into the box. This is a RockChip RK3399 CPU, so it actually has two CPU chips. One of them is the ARM Cortex uh, A. 72 that's up to 2 gigahertz and it has a quad core as well uh, cortex a53 up to 1.5 so a total of six cores and look at that first thing i notice is it has a ton of little micro resistors and everything else but look at the flip side you don't often see that where Wow, they've, th in order to cram so much into such a small form factor, um, they've double-sided this SBC. So there's the Rockchip RK3399 uh, actually on the bottom of the SBC. That's kind of interesting. So quick run through of the specifications here. I see full-sized HDMI and that is with a Mali T864 uh, GPU and it will run up to 60 frames per second in 4K. Uh, on the bottom here we've got a micro SD slot for the operating system. Now there isn't a standard uh, EMMC port on here but there is a port here and I'm not sure if that's proprietary or just a different interface but it's not the standard EMMC port. But it does support EMMC. You just need the either an adapter, I suppose, or a specific module for the NanoPi. Um, it has dual channel. I mentioned uh, a little earlier tonight that it has up to four gigabytes of RAM. You can choose whether you want two gig or four gig. So even their base model has twice as much RAM as a Raspberry Pi 3B+. It's 1866 uh, LPDDR3 memory. It has native gigabit Ethernet. So that's going to give you a gig connection to your router um, and it is a dedicated chip as far as I understand and we've got four USB 3.0 ports so we're looking at a, a little SBC here that is like screaming fast it's USB 3 and there's four of them it also has a USB C over here that can be used to either power it or you can use uh, you can use your OTG connecting uh, cables and adapters and things like that um, if you did that I suppose you'd have to power it over the GPIO. And speaking of the GPIO, it's a 40 pin, so Raspberry Pi style. It's also got uh, UART, SPI, and a whole bunch of other connectors here as well. Uh, if you want to add some kind of uh, sensors or things, if you're a maker and you want to build this thing up, you can do that. It has a stereo headphone jack, which also doubles as um, a microphone input. And of course, audio also goes out over the HDMI if you're using an HDMI monitor plugged into that. Um, and then uh, I guess the only other thing I notice here on the board is this two pin connector here, which looks like a real time clock. So it's got an RTC chip built in. And by adding a battery there, even when your SBC is powered off or disconnected from electricity, uh, it will still be able to remember um, the the time. Uh, as, you, as I mentioned, the uh, USB-C connector is used for power, um, and so that means the board is 5 volts, and it would like a 3 amp power supply. And as far as accessories go, now I mentioned that you're, you know, if you want to go EMMC, well, we've got to get a specific type of EMMC. We're not going to be able to use our standard card. But one of the things that's really impressive about this one is the heat sink. This is available for an additional 7 bucks, uh, but look at that solid aluminum that's the heat sink folks now I mentioned that the CPU is on the bottom so this is gonna go right on there and that's what your SPC is gonna look like Marshman has fired one of these up and said you know what it actually the heat sink gets pretty warm so it just goes to show that hey with this much power this thing is going to generate a fair bit of heat, so you may want to consider getting yourself the heat sink. Now, there's some thermal pad, uh, a thermal pad here, so that's going to go on your processor, and that is going to create a thermal connection between the heat sink and the CPU. Make sure that if you've got fingerprints on it, like I have, uh, we're going to clean that off with a little bit of alcohol and a, a clean wipe or something uh, before I put that thermal pad on there. And then that's going to go right on there. I can't wait to fire this thing up and check it out. Uh, we're going to be doing that on a future show, see how it 
it, uh, how it performs. We'll do some benchmarks and some gaming and, uh, and see how that works. But that is the NanoPi M4. It's about 65 bucks and another 7 bucks for the heatsink. And you can get that at cat5.tv slash NanoPi. That is a very cool computer. <laughs> I love it. I love that heatsink. I love the single board computers are getting, like, look at the power of that yeah. thing. And it's super small. Four gigs of RAM. Four 3.0 USB, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like, what is my computer? I don't think my computer has four. <laughs> I'm sure yours does. <laughs> yours is a bit of a beast. But it's, uh, it is like this. Yeah, that's right. Versus this something I can fit like... in my shirt pocket. Oh.